Stand by for Bowana.org radio. In three, two, one. Cue the announcer. You found Bowana.org radio. Your one source for tech news and reviews. Now, almost live from sunny Florida, here's your host, Bawana McCall. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 251 of Bawana.org Radio. Yeah, the last show was May 27th, 2010. Bawana.org Radio 250 was supposedly supposed to be supposedly the final show. And I had a lot of reasons behind that uh, at the time. I'm trying to remember everything that was going on, but I don't remember everything. There was a ton of things going on, and I had to reshuffle my priorities. and Basically tried to consolidate all the stuff that I talked about in Buona.org Radio into Buona.TV. Since May 27, 2010, a lot... Oh, wow. If you think back that far, a lot, a lot has changed. And uh, I've, I've come to find that I miss talking about tech stuff. Now, I, I shifted a lot of my focus towards video games because uh, that's where a majority of my uh, viewership was coming from. And uh, I was uh, trying to prioritize what to do, you know, what most people wanted. And the resounding majority said games. So I've been streaming gaming, talking about gaming, even became a Twitch.tv gaming admin on their website. So it's been primarily focused on that. But now, Buona.org Radio is back. If you don't know what Buona.org Radio is, it is a haven for tech stuff. It uh, usually consists of hardware reviews, uh, software reviews, gadgets, all that kind of good stuff. I should play the promo, (laughs) which goes over all that stuff. But... Towards the, the latter days of Buona.org Radio, I used to do a lot of uh, a lot of gaming news, and uh, I I even joked. I said, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna just call this show, you know, just gonna rename the show to Buona.org Gaming or something." I used to make some jokes like that, but I miss talking about tech, and uh, I tried to 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 mount a few comebacks over on Buona.tv, and uh, I've I've since had some hardware failures in terms of cameras and. Uh, had to sell a few things, um, reshuffle some priorities, and um, here we are today. Almost a full, uh, actually, greater than two years later, doing episode 251. Now, in the past, I used to complain about being late for a show or being late with an episode. I think two years is a little bit <laughs> over the top. So we got... A lot of good stuff to talk about today. I didn't want to pack too much in. Um, you know, that first show coming back, you you really are excited and everything. You got a lot of energy about it. But I want to keep it a semi-short show. Those famous last words. So let, let's go ahead and get started. It's time for Gowana.org Radio's Tech News for this week. And for our first story, we're going to talk about Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Some people pronounce it Ubuntu. Some people pronounce it Ubuntu. I'm going to pronounce it Ubuntu because that's the way it's pronounced. Yeah, jerks. Anyway, Ubuntu is a very, very popular Linux distribution. Linux is an alternate operating system that a lot of us geeks prefer. Allows us to tinker and tweak. And uh, I, you guys remember when Linux was going to take over the desktop? <laughs> The fight still continues as the Linux operating system fights against the evil Microsoft and the evil Apple and the evil Android. Wait a minute, Android's not evil. But Ubuntu 13.04 is right around the corner and it's gonna be called Raring Ringtail. And they got a picture of the Ubuntu logo with a striped tail and uh, this particular release of ubuntu is going to emphasize mobility and battery life now linux has always been popular in the embedded realm Uh, a lot of people use linux for embedded operating systems and uh, a lot of your devices that you have in your house may even be using flavors 
of Linux. But this particular flavor of Ubuntu, I almost pronounced it wrong, Ubuntu, is going to be focusing on laying the groundwork for phones, obviously, for tablets, and for TV interfaces. This is where we're seeing a lot of computing going today. And uh, I think Linux is definitely one of those operating systems that could thrive in that environment. Now, this puts Linux in direct competition with Android. Um, and Android and Linux have always kind of worked hand in hand together. They've been, they've been you know, like distant cousins um, for quite a while. But Ubuntu taking this stance in order to become more and more compatible with mobile devices that can offer all kinds of mobile battery life six plus hours is what people are used to today tablets that can run all day eight to ten hour battery lives on tablets tv interfaces you know you got your old days we had the tivo interfaces now we got direct tv comcast and you know time warner cable all these different cable boxes uh we're going to talk about boxy today boxy is another type of tv interface so this particular groundwork which he hopes to have in place for the next LTS release of April 2014 and 14.04. That's what they're shooting for to have this thing, you know, fully, fully functional, fully functional with phones, tablets, TV interfaces and the like. Just all kinds of all kinds of features fully fledged out by April 2014. Now, today's story is about 13.04. Let's not confuse it. 13.04 is going to lay the groundwork for that. So the first step, according to this article, would be to work on the core aspects of the OS, power memory management. That's going to prove crucial to the mobile platform. This story is over on Engadget.com. You guys can check it out. Ubuntu, the raring ringtail with focus on mobile. Now let's talk about Microsoft. Microsoft, boy, I tell you, you know, you, you know how you have like, like a kid on the basketball team that used to really stink or you had a kid on the baseball team that couldn't hit, couldn't throw, or you got somebody in your group that didn't know how to do algebra in your math group and they just couldn't add, couldn't subtract. And then one day they step out and they go, I now can hit the baseball. I now can shoot the basketball. I now know how to do algebra. Watch me integrate. It's, it's calculus. One of that's calculus. Microsoft is has been like the butt end of jokes for years about how they're doing everything wrong. They can't do anything right. They got Internet Explorer. Case closed. Microsoft Surface. This is the latest announcement from Microsoft. Microsoft Service, along with a bunch of other things that are coming out from Microsoft. We're going we're gonna to focus on Surface right now. Surface is Microsoft's newest toy. It came out a few years ago. I don't know if you guys remember. It was like this giant table that you've seen in like movies and stuff and TV shows and you know even on ESPN and CNN. They had these giant touchscreen tables and interfaces. A lot of that stuff was powered by Microsoft Surface. So finally, we're going to get Microsoft Surface in the form of a tablet. That's right. Going to combat the likes of Android and Apple with their tablets. And Microsoft Surface pricing has been has been announced as well as the pre-order time frame. $499 for 32 gigabytes without keyboard. And that keyboard's gonna come up. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. And five hundred and ninety-nine dollars with the keyboard. Now, if you don't get the bundle, the five ninety-nine keyboard with the keyboard, you have to buy this keyboard accessory separately. This thing's a hundred hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Whoa, whoa, why is it so expensive? What? Yeah, this this keyboard, and I'm gonna talk about the ad too, their advertisement that they came out with. This keyboard snaps to the interface or snaps to the tablet in an intuitive fashion, thereby creating an instant laptop. It's, it's quite ingenious how Microsoft has done this. It's, it's, it's like a snap and it stays. It doesn't move. 
You know, I can't wait to see all the drop tests and all the, the way people shake this thing to try to remove the keyboard from the tablet once it's connected. <laughs> but Microsoft came out with a commercial for Surface. And I had to share this with my wife. I said, what is this? Microsoft is doing a commercial and it's actually pretty decent. The commercial starts out. Let me try to describe it as best I can. As a guy, looks like a student. He's about to sit down on a, on a table outside to get his study on. So he breaks out his surface out of his backpack and he goes, hmm, maybe I should connect my keyboard to this set surface. And he connects his keyboard to it and it makes a snapping noise. It's like snap. It's like, and then these two women sitting next to him, they look over to like, what was that strange and intriguing noise you've just made? Apparently, they snapped out of it. Get what I did there? See what I did? See, these, these guys are marketing geniuses. They snapped out of it. And then all of a sudden, there was song and dance. People jumping around, screaming. Happiness all about Microsoft Surface, making all kinds of noise. It was quite well done. I, I made me want to buy one, even though I have no clue what it does yet. But I was like, hey, I want to buy that. I want to jump around to dubstep. It looked like an idiot and be happy with my snapping keyboard. <laughs> but it was a brilliant commercial. I, 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 I got to give it to Microsoft. They really have improved in a lot of areas that they used to really stink. So the commercial is good. Microsoft Surface is kind of a, a launch that Microsoft is smartly doing. I, I talked about this on Google Plus a little bit. Microsoft is actually launching an ecosystem. I wonder what you're talking about. Well, they launched this Windows Phone, you know, earlier this year, and the Nokia Lumia, which we're going to talk about a little bit. Not too good in sales. Didn't do too well. But since then, Microsoft has released a new Xbox Live interface. Windows 8 is going to go on sale. And this Surface tablet is available for pre-order thereby pushing out this ecosystem they're going to launch this new music service which i think is already launched xbox music rebranded re-everything everything is going to have a similar look everything is going to be tightly integrated does this all sound familiar well it should because they're freaking turned into apple they're freaking turned to apple microsoft has now become apple in this twisty, topsy-turvy world where Bill Gates is retired and Steve Jobs, rest his soul, is deceased. We now have Microsoft serving as the new Apple with a walled garden. Nobody saw it coming. Are people going to embrace it? That part remains to be seen. So this Microsoft Surface tablet, 64 gigabytes, listed at $699 as well. I forgot to talk about that version. On top of the existing, of the existing 499, 32 gigabyte version, as well as the 599 version that comes with the Snap tab. You got to have the Snap keyboard, man. Remember the commercial? You, you remember the commercial? You, you, you got to have that. You got to have that. Check it out, guys. This is over on gottabemobile.com. We got the details and you're over there. Now we're going to move on to our next story. Nokia. Nokia has been taking a beating in the media. Uh, namely for their, from, for their fall from grace. Nokia was top dog for many, many years with their Symbian OS. And with their global sales just eclipsing everything out there. But since the dawn of the touchscreen... <laughs> the iPhone, Android, boom, Nokia, along with RIM, Research in Motion, has found themselves backpedaling and trying to regroup and regroup and backpedaling and just stumbling all over the place. As the next story I'm going to talk about doesn't really help them. Nokia, Lumia, was supposed to save the company in terms of a turnaround point. This is where we're going to turn around. Now, the, the Lumia is not going to save the company by itself, obviously. But this is where things were supposed to turn around. The Nokia Lumia was the first Windows Phone 8 that I knew about. That was really, really pushed as being the next big thing. According to this article on GigaOM, 
Nokia has come out to report their earnings, and it's not looking good. They're reporting a difficult quarter. Nokia CEO Stefan Elop said that the Q3 Global Lumia sales volume dipped from 4 million during the previous three months to 2.9 million, amongst a total 6.3 million smart devices. And this tweet by Strategy Eye kind of summarizes it. Nokia shipped 2.9 million Lumia devices for the entire Q3. Apple, however, sold 5 million iPhone 5s in one weekend. Yeah, kind of unfair to do that, but it's the reality. It's the reality. Now, here's the kicker. This is where analysts, this is where some consumers will probably get a little sour taste in their mouth. And as a former Nokia fanboy, I'm con- I was a confessed Nokia fanboy. I-, I use nothing else. I'm kind of sad to see this trend, but I still believe, man. I still believe. Nokia has basically said, well, the Lumia didn't do well, but we're coming out with this new thing. You know, they're doing that again. In the prior sales calls, the new thing was the Lumia. So now that the Lumia has not done as well as anticipated, now they're falling on this. Were you probably going, Buona? How do you know the Lumia didn't do well? That's probably exactly what they what they wanted to what they wanted to ship. Hmm. Here's a quote. Nokia chalked up 120 million euros. So $157 million in excess component inventory, future purchase commitments, and an inventory re-evaluation, revaluation related to our current Lumia products. In other words, it bought parts and contracts for w- way more than they could sell. This is a management snafu. You basically ordered too many parts and you didn't sell enough units. So you got all this stuff sitting around. They obviously did not anticipate these weak sales and 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 on you know the contrary they were expecting to sell a lot more than what they actually sold quarterly net loss ballooned to 969 million 1.27 billion dollars from 68 million last year nokia has lost a third of its quarterly smart devices net sales over the last year it's not looking good for nokia guys But, like I said in the previous story, Microsoft is pushing Windows 8, Windows Phone 8, Xbox Live, that whole ecosystem, really, really big now. So when the new devices do come out, the new Lumia 920 and 820, uh, they're going to ship with the microphone uh, Windows Phone 8 platform. I'm sorry. I think I said Phone 8 before. I think it was Phone 7, Windows Phone 7 before. Windows Phone 8, this coming October and November, they're betting everything on that. Check it out, guys. Gigaohm.com. They got the details over there. For our next story, we're going to talk about Apple. Apple has sent out their little birthday party invitations. Did You, you didn't get one? You didn't get a birthday? Uh, you, you didn't. Oh, oh, that's, that's too bad. Don't worry, guys. I didn't get one either. <laughs> Apple has announced a special event for October 23rd, and uh, it's going to be covered by everybody. No secret here. And saying that phrase in the same sentence as Apple, it's kind of weird. But no secret here. This is going to be the release of the iPad mini. Remember when Apple was very secretive and they could keep secrets? Me too. I do remember that. Those days are long gone. Because pretty much everything Apple has announced in the past two years, I think two years, I'm going to say two years, year and a half, two years, has been leaked. So it's like little to no fanfare at all. Now, other companies like Google, Nokia, you know, Samsung, their stuff gets leaked too, but nobody cares because, yeah, everybody else's stuff gets leaked. But Apple was like, no, if you dare mention any word about the iPad mini, we will chop off your toes and sell them. As currency and employees were like no no don't chop off my toes I like my toes October 23rd special event you can expect to see the iPad mini now the iPad mini's got a bunch of rumor posts I'm not gonna cover all of these in this show because there's so many people speculating 
I didn't want the return of Buona.org Radio to be filled with rumor and speculation. So, iPad Mini, definitely going to be announced at this October 23rd event. What will it be? I don't think anybody knows exactly. But we do know it's going to be iPad Mini. I've seen some articles, people detailing the battery, the screen. (laughs) I think all the details are going to come into fruition completely at this event. Check it out, guys, and Gadget has a story. You're listening to Bawana.org Radio, a potpourri of tech news and reviews. Now, while we're on the topic of cell phones, let's talk about Instagram. Instagram is a cell phone, or I'm sorry, mobile phone. I use cell phone. Man, you're one year old. <laughs> they're not called cell phones. They're called smartphones. Instagram is a mobile app. Here you go. Now I'm hip. Instagram is a mobile app for taking pictures and has a bunch of snazzy effects. Makes them up, makes uploading them to the internet a cinch. Very, very popular. So much so that Facebook bought them for like a billion dollars or something. Pretty much. The reason I'm talking about Instagram is that it's coming possibly to the Blackberry. Oh, <laughs> the what berry? Well, no, we're not talking about food here. This is a tech show. No, I'm talking about the. I'm talking about research in motion, the the rim, BlackBerry, the BlackBerry mobile device. <laughs> now I'm getting a little bit technical with it. BlackBerry 10 OS is supposed to debut in this, uh, no, not this, I don't know if it's this quarter, but it's 2013. VentureBeat has stated that its sources, this is where the sources come from, have confirmed that Instagram would not be making an appearance on BlackBerry 10, but CrackBerry is refuting VentureBeats claims and saying that Instagram's parent Facebook will be in fact delivering the photo app to BlackBerry 10. Though no timeline was given. This is on gottobemobile.com. So CrackBerry and VentureBeat are disagreeing. VentureBeat says, no, they're not doing it. CrackBerry's like, yep, they're doing it. So we will see. I think it was interesting, and the reason why I chose this story to talk about is that we've been talking about Microsoft, we've been talking about Android and Apple, but that conversation of research in motion, or RIM, hasn't been brought up a lot in this mobile phone race. Hmm, very, very interesting. So we might be seeing some Instagrammed photos. I call them Instagrammed because you can tell. Oh, you can tell when a photo has been Instagrammed. You probably have seen one. Even though you have never heard of Instagram, you probably have seen an Instagrammed photo. Check it out. GottaBeMobile.com has a story over there. Did you know that 6 billion people are using mobile devices? Cell phones? I said it again. 6 billion. 6 billion. Not million, that's a B, billion. Smartphones and tablets are obviously taking the world by storm, of course. But would it surprise you if you knew that nearly 85% of the world's population, 85% is using mobile devices? That's crazy. That's crazy, man. That's, That's crazy. And it's kind of scary if you think about it. Can you think, I mean, just imagine, those of you who read a lot of comic books and watched a lot of movies, just think of a villain sitting in a room going, <laughs> uh, if only there was a way I could have access to 85% of the world's population, then the universe will be mine. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mobile devices. I shall implant my brainial cranial virus and control them all. (laughs) It would make a good book. I'd buy it. But this article goes on to say, unsurprisingly, China alone accounted for about 1 billion of the users. And India is expected to close in on 1 billion as well before the end of the year. So that's 2 billion right there. Big chunk right there. Two of the six billion are in China and India. Hmm. And you wonder why a lot of the businesses are going over there. Huh. That's where the users are. Huh. Six billion, 
two of them are in that Asia realm. So I don't know what to think about this, man. It, it's scary. It, it, I, I use I, I mean, if you if you talk to people today versus people like in the seventies, and you ask them, what do you carry with you at all times? At all times. Back in the 70s, someone would say, oh, I always carry my trusty pen. Because you never know when you might have to write something down. So I always like my favorite pen. So I like, I carry my calculator. Because I don't know math. And somebody else might say, well, uh, I, I carry my favorite brush. It's my good luck charm. Today, I carry my cell phone. My mobile, my, dad, my iPhone. I got my Android. I got my Android. I got my Android. Got my Windows phone. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody's carrying their phone around. Scary times. Scary, scary times. Six billion people using mobile devices. Check it out, guys. Over on Slash Gear, they got this interesting statistic. I just had to talk about it because it makes you think, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That evil guy just sitting there going, <laughs> yes, good, good. Use that iPhone. Good. <laughs> Use that Android device. My little slave. <laughs> no, 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 it's not funny anymore. And slash gear. Okay, now we're going to shift gears and talk about Google. Google has done something that I didn't think they'd do for a very long time. Unless they were forced to. Uh, and a lot of companies have something that they're very secretive of. You know, the a lot of the food companies, they their formulas and... You know, the way they do their food and preserve their food and prepare it is like their company's lifeline. So they protect it. Now tell anybody about it. You can think about Coke, Coca-Cola, the drink. That formula is probably under lock and key and, and probably locked in another dimension. Google, I think their prize position is their data centers. Because here is the biggest search engine in the world probably archiving and crawling as much data as anything could possibly fathom. So a lot of competing companies are probably wondering how in the world do they manage their data centers? How do they, how do they manage the traffic? How are Google services almost always fast? Cause you know, when we first started using Google, I know I did. I was like, man, this site comes up so fast. It's got nothing but a search bar. I love it. Because I was using stuff like Yahoo. I was using stuff like Asta, um, Alta Vista. I was used to stuff like uh, uh, MSN. Or, or uh, what was it called back then? What is live search now? But I think it was MSN search. I had Lycos. And you would load up these search engines and all kinds of nonsense would just load up. And back then we had 56K, 28.8K modems. And we didn't know any better. So it would take forever just to start the search. When Google came around, we were like, oh, oh, it loads so fast. And you do search and it's like, bam, search results in 2.8 milliseconds. And they were relevant. All behind the scenes were these data centers. So Google recently opened the doors and they let us see inside their data centers one of the data centers in North Carolina. Very, very interesting what we see here. They, they talk you through where the employees work. They talk you through where the, uh, where the network center is, where all the routing is done. They don't, get, they don't go detailed. They just show you the rooms, basically. And they show you the server room and tell you how everything's cool in this little cool video. But not only did they just post videos and open it up to the press, but they actually put a Google Street View link up. So that you can navigate it from home and check it out. Now, like I said, this is their this is their backbone, man. And I can't help but wonder that they were forced to do this. <laughs> you don't voluntarily do this kind of stuff. So I think there was some probably some environmental groups and sanctions coming down. And uh, you know, something that is so secretive as their data centers, I think I think they wanted to protect that. And these, uh, I think some outside influences really accelerate this. That's my theory. I don't have any proof. But hey, I can theorize without proof. It's my podcast. Shut up. <laughs> GigaOhm.com has the story. 
Google uncloaks, I like that word, uncloaks the hidden word, world, world, hidden world of its data centers. Very, very intriguing. If you're thinking about getting the IT, check it, take a look at this, guys. I've been in a, a few server rooms in my experience. This is the, this is, this is it. This is probably what, this is the best you're going to see. I've never seen anything this massive. Giga Ohm has a story. Now, speaking of Google, Google has messed up. That's the only way I can say it nicely. They have messed up. Somehow, some way, Google's earnings, their quarterly earnings were announced early. And you're probably wondering, well, why does that even matter? Well, they were less than expected and their stock price plummeted. It dropped like a rock. It was ridiculous how fast it dropped. If you if you could see, if you could have seen, and you probably still can see it on any finance site. Look at the graph. It was like a cliff. It's like, oh, the stock's humming along, and then pew, it just nosedived. So much so that they halted trading. So the details of this are still coming in, but apparently their EPS, which is the magical number that a lot of analysts look at, their earnings per share came in at $9.03, and they were supposed to make $10.65. That, that was the analyst estimates, $10.65. So they were pretty far below. In these numbers, you may not, that may not sound like a lot, but when EPS is that far off, people make a big deal. Because that, that, that could be millions of dollars for somebody. They also came in with, uh, let's see, the revenue minus traffic acquisition costs came in at $11.3 billion, short of estimates of $11.8 billion. So they missed the mark. So what happened? I know a lot of us, I know I was thinking, I'm like, somebody at Google is going to get fired. Ooh, somebody's in trouble. It's like somebody in their law offices or you know, I don't know, whoever's in charge of releasing these forms and these documents to earnings out to the public is in trouble. But Google later came out and said that, well, we blame our printing contractor. <laughs> what? I, I, I wish I was making this up. Google blamed the early release on their printing contractor, R.R. Donnelly. Here's a quote. Earlier this morning, R.R. Donnelly, the financial printer, informed us that they had filed our draft 8K earnings statement without authorization. We have ceased trading on NASDAQ while we work to finalize the document. Once it's finalized, we will release our earnings, resume trading on NASDAQ, and hold our earnings call at a normal 130 Pacific, which is right about now, actually. So by the time I release this podcast, you guys may have some different numbers, but that's what I have right now. Uh, wow. This is this is a billion dollar blunder. I, I, I think BDB, billion dollar blunder. Make a t-shirt with that. <laughs> oh, Google, Google. I'm pretty sure their relationship with this RR Donnelly is a little bit strained to be polite i think it's a little bit in jeopardy not a good thing not a good thing check it out giga Ohm has a story you over there now we're going to shift gears and talk a little bit about best buy and you know while i was gone from my hiatus you know one of the things that shifted in terms of just like retail dominancy was that Best Buy was no longer top dog. And that was crazy because I used to love this shop. I used to go there all the time, just a window shop. But there's this website called Amazon.com that has incredible prices and you know a lot of great shipping options and great customer service that really took to <laughs> took over. Lots and lots of people were shopping online. So this story that I found over on SlashGear.com talks about how Best Buy 
is trying to battle this term called showrooming. Now, what is showrooming? Well, showrooming is where you actually physically go to the store, pick up an item, look at it, play with it, and then you just turn around and drive home. And you order it online cheap for a cheaper price. That's showrooming. Um, and, you know, from Best Buy's perspective, that ain't good because they're paying a lot of money to set up these demo stations and, and to show you the products. And it, it's a shame that you walk in there, use that service that they offer, and, and they don't get any money out of it. They're like, man, we're losing money here in more than one way. So what Best Buy is going to do this holiday season to battle the showrooming is they're going to do what they call price matching. But it's going to be internet price matching. So while you're showrooming, while you're looking at something in the Best Buy store, they will price match it if it's cheaper on Amazon. Very smart. I don't know if they can afford to do this permanently. But very smart. Um, it will definitely cut down on the amount of showrooming. But I hope they can get the word out. Because I don't think people are going to know this unless they're reading Slash Gear. Or they're on top of this type of news. So they might have to spam us. As we walk through the door, did you know that we price match internet prices? Hey, sir, how you doing? Do you know that we price match internet? They might have to actually do that. So here's the hoping that uh, that it works out because I want them to do this all the time. I doubt they can afford it, though. This is a very expensive, expensive proposition for a business model that they have right now. I, I can't imagine they can keep it up. But keep this in mind, guys. When you're shopping this holiday, if you're shopping for something at Best Buy, you see a DD, a DD, a DVD or a CD, or, you know, a keyboard or a peripheral, uh, that new game console that's coming out, you know, rhymes with SMIU, it's Nintendo Wii U, and they actually have them in stock, which I doubt they will. So you'll probably be looking at games. Hey, you can price match with internet prices. And Best Buy will thank you because that's the reason why they designed this. So that you could buy their products in their brick and mortar shop and not go home and shop online. Check it out, guys. Slash Gear has a story. Best Buy is battling showrooming with internet price matching. You found Bawana.org Radio. Tech news and tech gadgets for the hardcore geek in all of us. Now we're going to talk about a piece of hardware related to streaming. And I don't know if you guys know. You probably do. Yeah, you, you know. I do live streaming. Yeah. I actually stream myself, a picture of myself sometimes. And I mostly stream video games now. But I used to stream myself just talking about tech. And actually, I used to stream myself doing this particular show. And that may be coming again soon. I got to get my, my setup uh, up to par here. But we're going to talk about the camera portion of that. Now, up till this this announcement or, or this article, you would have to. Well, other companies have done it as well, but you would have to set up your machine to have a webcam, and on your laptop or on your computer, you would have to have the appropriate software, or you would have to connect to a special website to stream yourself live. Now, what's streaming? Streaming is showing your webcam image live over the internet or showing your desktop or showing the video game live over the internet so as you're doing it as you're talking people can see what you're doing in real time with a very slight delay on it most sites like ustream.tv justin.tv livestream.com offer chat rooms to go along with these videos so that you can interact with people live Popular shows like This Week in Tech with Leo Laporte. They have elaborate live streaming equipment, live streaming software, and the users love it. Users love it. So, what am I going to talk about now? Logitech has announced a new product for Mac only. Puzzling. I was like, wow. Usually it's the other way around. Usually the Mac support 
lags with Logitech. But no, they've announced a new Wi-Fi webcam, a broadcaster Wi-Fi webcam for $200. Now, what this webcam offers is the ability to capture video and to stream it to your favorite site, Ustream, if that's your favorite site. It will instantly broadcast it to Ustream. And not only that, it can toggle between your device or computer's built-in camera. So if you got a phone, because this thing has to be tethered to something, it has to be tethered to your computer or phone or tablet, you can switch back and forth between your iPhone. Now, I find, you know, if you're going to like a live event or if you're going to like a, I like to go, some, I used to, I don't go to them anymore, to like midnight launches of video games, you know, you would have to constantly, you know, I, I used to stream them from my phone and I would like show my face and I flip the camera, flip my phone around, flip it back and forth. You could switch back. You could have your own public recording studio with this just by carrying this thing around and your phone and switch between your face and the camera and live stream it all to Ustream. So this is a pretty nifty mobile broadcasting setup for $200, not that expensive. Now, uh, companies like Livestream.com are offering these hardware streaming devices as well. And they, they did it a while ago. But this is more of a mo more of a mobile setup than theirs. This is very mobile. This camera is not that big. It can shoot up to 720p video. And it has wireless transmission from 50 feet, 50 feet away. So you can actually mount this thing somewhere and do a mobile broadcast. Very, very interesting. It has a plastic carrying case with a magnetic lid. It doubles as a stand to elevate the cam. Isn't that cool? And it says it will play nicely with iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and FaceTime. But again, this is a Mac-only thing. So you either have to have a Mac computer, iPhone, or iPad for this to work. Really wish they would include an iPod Touch in there. They would have a lot more. Uh, I think they had a lot more cells. Even though iPod Touch is pretty much a uh, Wi-Fi only device, you know, you may have iPads that are uh, Wi-Fi only as well. But very, very interesting. Check it out, guys. This is over on Engadget.com. This mobile broadcasting camera, $200. HD Wi-Fi broadcaster web fan, webcam, 720p, and uh, I'll be definitely looking for reviews of this. And if someone has some picture quality uh, options and, and what it can offer, I'd be happy to see that because it, it's a it's a great mobile setup. You guys ever heard of Boxy? No, not the internet meme. That girl, not her. Talking about Boxy TV. Boxy TV was one of the the first beloved internet TV applications that really brought to the forefront how powerful you no know, entertainment is over the internet. Uh, this was a, this was at a time that you know a lot of people still had cable, still were relying on cable for their primary source of uh, of, of entertainment. And Boxy came out and said, "Hey, we're going to offer you this." This service, it was software first and really, really cool. You can play your own movies that you have locally or you can listen to music and we have these apps and very, very robust, very cool ecosystem. And then they came out with their boxy box, which was a set top box, which allows you to do the same thing and it easily hooked up to your TV. Now we see the next iteration coming up called boxy TV. Now what this device is going to offer is what users have been clamoring for for years with boxy they wanted to, the ability to do time shift time shifting and, and be able to watch live television not just recorded stuff basically replacing the dvrs that we get from our cable companies so boxy tv gives you the uh, capability to watch live tv from your local hd stations from abc cbs fox and nbc and more and it can use an antenna or unencrypted basic cable lines. Has two tuners, so you can watch one show and record another one. And uh, it's also going to include the, the standard stuff that Boxy has, like Netflix, Hulu, Pandora, which I love all of these. Um, and it sounds very, very cool. Now, the, the biggest thing that they're going to be adding to this is the ability 
to store your recordings in the cloud. Oh, you said that C word, Buona. Oh, man. If I can go back and listen to my old episodes of Buona.org Radio. And it was like, I don't remember talking about the cloud that much. I was talking about a little bit. I think we were talking about, you know, how it would fail. <laughs> now, everything is in the cloud. Everything's in the cloud, man. Companies are moving to the cloud. Do you know Pirate Bay is moving to the cloud? The pirates are moving to the cloud. Everybody's in the cloud. So, Boxy TV is going to give you unlimited storage space of your DVR recordings in the cloud. But there's a catch. Oh, there's a catch. But before I tell you about the catch, let me sell it some more. You can watch your recordings anywhere on your laptop, tablet, or your television. Oh, but there's a catch. It's going to cost you a subscription fee. $15 $15 a month. Now, you didn't think they were going to have to, they were going to offer you all this storage for free in the cloud. Cloud equals dollar signs, guys. Whenever you hear somebody mention cloud storage, it's going to cost you something. Whether it be advertising all in your face, whether it be a monthly subscription fee, whether it be, I don't know. It's going to cost you something. So, this box is going to cost $99 base price, which is a decent price going to be available in November. Now this DVR feature is only going to be available in eight markets in the United States. I'm sorry, Europe. You don't get it. You don't get it yet. Uh, it's going to be rolling out to eight markets in the US. New York City, Los Angeles. You can guess these cities, right? Like the major cities in America. Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Washington, DC. Now if I was attacking the US, those would be the cities. <laughs> those are all the major cities. Those are like every alien movie hits these cities. These are the big. These are the big cities, um, with the most people. Fourteen ninety nine a month, ninety nine dollar boxy TV device looks intriguing. As someone who's trying to cut the cable, I'm very close. I still have Direct TV, and I'm trying to get rid of it. This possibly could work. Now, if I can get a decent antenna, because I don't have any more, they're all gone. Um, I don't know if my line is encrypted or not my cable line but if I could ensure that I can watch these over the air HD channels um, I'm assuming that's what they are you know this might be a sell for me $99 you know it's about the same price as the Apple TV which gives you a lot of similar functionality um, in a lot of different ways but Boxy's a little bit more flexible a lot more apps a lot more freedom with the with the box they encourage a lot of hacks and stuff um, very intriguing at $99. Check it out, guys. Over on Slash Gear, they got the details. Okay, from the department of the cool department, we're going to talk about a very, very cool hack a day project. This is a portal gun. This is from the video game portal. Yes, I am talking about a video game. Don't worry, this show is not going to be littered in video games. I have a separate show for that now. It's called Game Chat with Buona. Go check it out. YouTube.com slash Plug, 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 plug. <laughs> Here is a portal gun replica. Hackaday portal gun. Now, normally I wouldn't cover this kind of stuff because, yeah, people have made all kinds of cool models of portal guns. They look really cool. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty nice. But this particular project will actually do something that I have never seen anywhere else. In the video game portal, you actually move cubes with the portal gun. This is how you lift things. You know, you can create portals and run through them. With this device, this project, it actually levitates cubes. It can make a baby companion cube levitate in midair. Uh, I know. I know. Sit down. You catch your breath, sit down. Those of you who know Portal are probably going, <gasps> gasp! Yeah, it's, it's true. Check it out. It's over in the gadget. They got pictures of it. It can levitate the cube. Uh-huh. Very, very, very nice Hackaday project. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's a geek's awesome and then this Hackaday. You would never see a gamers. I mean, gamers worldwide are probably looking at this going. I want 
Even just so I can look at it and it's levitating a cube. Oh. Very cool reproduction of a very popular device in a very popular game. Over in the gadget, guys, you got to check out this Hackaday portal gun, which can actually levitate a companion cube. And for our final story, we're going to talk about dolphins. No, not the Miami Dolphins. I know they're three and three American football team. I know we're not doing so with it. No, I'm going to talk about actual dolphins. And this is a very interesting story. Dolphins, I'm going to read the headline because that's the only way I can explain this without messing it up. Dolphins can sleep one half of their brain at a time. Dolphins can sleep one half of their brain at a time, says researchers. Dolphins can sleep one half of their brain at a time. <sighs> Scientists from the United States have learned that dolphins are able to stay alert and active for 15 days or more at a time by sleeping only one half of their brain. The experts believe that this ability to stay alert by using only half their brain is key to the survival of the sea mammals. The scientists believe that this ability helps dolphins to surface, to breathe, and remain vigilant for predators, predators such as sharks. So this article goes on and talks about the study, and they believe that they put half of their brain to sleep. So you think you're talking to a dolphin, he's asleep. Okay, 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 okay. He's knocked out. You're talking to half his brain. Silly dolphins and your half sleeping self. I, I couldn't believe it. I literally couldn't believe it. I was like, what if we had that ability? What if we could just put our creative side to sleep and just purely be analytical? And then all of a sudden we put our analytical slide side of our brain to sleep. And all of a sudden we're just, we're speaking a new language. Or we run around and we paint everything. We're just incredibly artistic. <laughs> Dolphins can sleep one half of their brain, guys. Check it out over on SlashGear.com. Okay, guys, that concludes our show for today. That's episode 251 of Buona.org Radio. I want to thank everybody for listening. Again, this is going to be in an audio-only format for for a bit. I'm going to record it offline for a bit so I can get settled, get back into the groove of things, and then we'll try to hook it up, make it a little bit better. Uh, maybe in a, in a few months I can buy some better equipment to uh, to get it, you know, route it to audio very, very efficiently while I'm recording live and that kind of stuff. Um, so for, right, for now, we're just going to go with this old school setup that I started with. I think it's rightfully so that I start again the, the way i started initially it's just with a microphone and my web browser in front of me we talk about stories and tech stuff i love to talk about and i really missed talking about it that's episode 251 guys that concludes it i'll see you all next time we're gonna try to go for a tuesday thursday release schedule uh don't know if i'm gonna stick to that just yet i might have to just go thursday for now but we're gonna try to do tuesday thursday but we'll see and Stay tuned, guys. Go to radio.buena.org. I'm going to update the RSS feeds. We're going to try to find an alternate way of delivering this other than RSS. Of course, I'm going to be, I'm going to be uh, posting this to Twitter at twitter.com slash Buona. Over on my Google Plus page, you can bet I'm going to be talking about these stories there. Go to google.com slash plus Buona. And uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Don't have any sponsors at the moment for this show. Uh, don't anticipate any anytime soon i'm just gonna do what i do and if they come to me fine if not I'll just keep doing it all right guys take care have a great night day morning bye bye